the XFL are the, are, the, are your coaches reaching out and like giving you guys programs? They're not giving you programs or, or things to be working on. Nothing, man. The XFL is it's dead right now. It's it doesn't exist right it doesn't now. Doesn't exist. It's Even though the like Rock a, came in. Yeah, I mean it exists, but like it's just kind of pencil on some paper right now yeah, cause it's just a legal entity basically exactly it's just got bought out by the the rock and I, I mean he's probably doing stuff to get his staff in place but right now i mean i haven't heard anything from that Nothing. he hasn't hired anybody um it's kind of just him and uh garcia right now who's garcia that's his partner his business partner mm-hmm. that i think it's his ex-wife or something i'm not really yeah sure, i think i might have read that too because his whole investor group i think was i think his ex-wife don't don't believe me on this but i think his ex-wife might be like his manager or something still Mm -hmm. even though they're not together they still work together yeah and um yeah so when march hit everybody got fired like it went bankrupt so like they sell it to the bank bank takes it and like that entity and then and which went for sale in july and then the rock bought it but the thing is he didn't buy everybody's like our contracts were still kind of they're just still there they're still fucked. Know? they never got paid out they never got anything like that but um but yeah i mean right now with that it's just kind of something up in the air you don't know what's gonna happen is the rock gonna hire me again is the rock gonna hire yeah. Um, the same staff is for the rock and hire the same coaches. Like everything is going to change. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's football, but it's all, it's a business and this is that business part of it. That sucks. You know, you can't, you can't just kind of, Oh yeah. Yeah. My contract. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just going to re up it. It's, it's up in the air. I'm assuming, I mean, I hope he just kind of re ups everybody's contract. Cause I mean, we were doing really well, mm-hmm. and sales were coming in. Revenue was being made, and in all aspects. Even though, I mean, I was on Seattle, but in Seattle, I mean, we were kind of one of the worst teams. But um, we still made money. We brought yeah, in. Like, your fan base was still legit. Yeah, we brought in like forty thousand fans a game, and like CenturyLink was popping when we were playing. Yeah. So like, I came to a game, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was legit. Yeah, was, I'd never obviously been there for Seahawks, but that was my first time being in Seattle, but. It was fun. Yeah. And it was cold weather. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I right? <laughs> didn't care at all. Yeah. And that's Seattle saying, like, when I moved to Seattle, I saw how, like, Seattle fucking loves sports. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking awesome to see because we fit in there. We went in there. You see all of our posters all over the city and shit. And, like, we're walking down the street. Because we live downtown mm-hmm. in, like, a big, in, like, a hotel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, xfl isn't a fucking the nfl so we didn't have like a million dollars to like have our own facilities and like shit like that and the nfl is not gonna let us use their facilities mm-hmm. we're like a competitor for them you know yeah. so we went we like practiced at this kind of community field type thing in the middle of seattle is it dirt or like a turf field no it was a turf field it was, turf it, field. it was a nice field it was, it was mostly for like soccer games and like yeah. shit like that it, it had a lot of stands like um high 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 rise stands yeah. and shit but um yeah we practice there we'd take the train to freaking practice every day so we'd walk around downtown and stuff and like like the fans knew who we were we wear our seattle dragon stuff and everybody like oh you, you guys play for the dragon stuff like that and uh it was cool to see that's what i'm trying to get to is that seattle freaking they love their sports out there you like to be in there yeah i loved it i mean it was rainy. I'm not gonna lie, it was rainy a lot. We had to practice in some rain a lot, but uh, Seattle is beautiful, man. That's the first time I was. I mean, second time I was out there. I played there once, once in college, but I'm not. I didn't get to see it like living there. And yeah. like 30 minutes from the mountains, you mm-hmm. see the water right there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of hippies everywhere, but like, and a lot of homeless everywhere. But it's a cool city, and there's a lot of culture behind that city. That's mm-hmm. what I really liked. And it's, it's just a cool place to be in general. You got the fish market. We were like two blocks from the fish market. It so was we, at, uh, what is that called? Pike's Place? Pike's Place, yeah. Pike's Place is, is dope. If you haven't been to Pike's Place, I highly recommend you go. Yeah. Because. Bunch of food to try too. And they got all the samples. And they'd be throwing fish at you and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Kiki went down there and then, um, the like, those guys they kind of sit on this like big platform yeah with they're the fish yelling on the order. Thing? Yeah, yeah they're like yelling the orders and shit and then kiki and i were looking at the fish and kiki she hates seafood yeah so. <laughs> we go over and like look at the octopus or something 
and they play games with you yeah. because we went and looked at octopus and you can they could tell that kiki didn't like the octopus or so, so like they had this little they have it's like a fake octopus it's not one that they serve mm-hmm. and they like move it so it like looks like it's alive <laughs> And I'm pretty, and Kiki got freaked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> she thought it was alive. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't think that he could control it because he's like way far back. Oh, has he, he got it like on a stick? Yeah, and he just made it move a little bit and she freaked out, but. That's funny. Um, but she yeah. Screamed? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she screamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I could tell She's when I was there. Give me shit. Like, I didn't scream or. Oh, that's all right. She yeah. probably won't even. Maybe she won't watch this. I don't She'll probably watch because <laughs> you're on it she yeah let's but hope so i remember when we came to watch one of your games and then me and cat hung around for like a day or so i i, I remember watching them fuck with people mm-hmm. um i tried to not uh make eye contact with those guys because like they're probably gonna throw something at me i don't know what the fuck they're gonna they do throw a salmon at you yeah. while you're walking by. yeah i just look at him like hey, and turn <laughs> look somewhere else <laughs> don't open the door for that shit but yeah man were you there in the summer, did you get there when it was nice weather? No, so our season started in December of 20, 2020. What? No. 2019? 2019. Yeah, geez. 2019. Dece- uh, it was like December 3rd or something. I flew out there. And we had like OTAs and stuff. Just like workouts and like uh, getting to know the team. And uh, meeting with the coaches and stuff and learning the playbook. But um, we didn't start. We And then... Funny thing is, we were there for December for like, what was it like three weeks, three or four weeks or something. We we're OTAs and we flew home and then um, for Christmas and then everybody flew to Texas and we all had training camp in Houston. Hmm. And that was something really unique to the XFL, but it was really cool because like you had all the teams in one place and we all kind of practiced um, separately but then we would have scrimmages and stuff. So, like, you know how the NFL has preseason? That was kind of mm-hmm. our, like, preseason. We, um, they were testing the league out. So, like, they had uh, the TV broadcasters come out and, like, they'd, they'd do those interviews on the sidelines and stuff. Like, you know, you've seen those interviews? Like mock interviews? No, like, they did. They, yeah, like mock interviews mm-hmm. during our scrimmages and stuff. But, like, those interviews were, like, um, it's very XFL-like. Like, You'll get done with a play or somebody will throw a pick. They'll go right up to the QB and be like, what were you thinking on that play? <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? Like, and then, to, like, yeah, like, people would be salty, too. They come back to, to they come back to the sideline. You just throw a pick. You want to just kind of get your mind right and shit. And you got a, you got a reporter in your face. Hey, what what were you thinking you on that play? Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I had one of my teammates. I remember uh, it was the first game. One of my teammates, he's an old lineman. Um we were doing we were losing to the defenders mm-hmm. and it was against Cardale Jones and Cardale was he was going off and um we weren't doing so hot on offense and the reporter went up to him and was like so what do you have to do to get this game together he's like oh i don't know we got to get the fucking we got to get our fucking shit straight man like <laughs> he just started saying f bombs up to Wazi on national television Are and they it's like one of the yeah it's live it's <laughs> totally live so like He's saying all, like, swearing up a storm and stuff. And uh, this is, like, one of the first interviews and stuff of the league. <laughs> and this is just a perfect start to it. Yeah. But uh, it, it was stuff like that that was cool, though, about the XFL, you know? Like, the NFL doesn't do it. It's, it's very professional and stuff like that. Did it's they, kinda did rock they care solid. that he was cussing? Or? No, they didn't. Like, they didn't give a fuck. It was just, like, it was cool. That's what they wanted. They wanted personality. That's mm-hmm. one of the first things they kind of said to us is like, this will kind of show um, personality of the players and show like the real side of players rather than just, you know, X's and O's going out there and yeah. banging heads. Well, they probably want yeah you guys to get, uh, I mean, that makes sense business-wise to start getting memes and people retweeting and sharing yeah, people, videos. That, I remember seeing that even in Seattle. I don't remember mm-hmm. what the video was, but there was a couple of viral videos of, I think, your guys' team on twitter probably we our our uh our media coordinator was he was a good guy and he had a lot of tricks up his sleeve we'd do some funny shit with everything but but yeah that's what they did wanted they wanted they wanted stuff like that yeah just to give awareness exactly and get in they did a good do- job like um 
they're doing a good job marketing. If you ever seen an XFL like uh, their Twitter, mm-hmm. man, that was one of the best professional like per- professional leagues Twitter ever. Or like their Instagram, yeah. He was doing a good. He was one of the best marketers like ever. I don't know what his name is, but shout out to him. Uh, he he did a good ass job just marketing the XFL and stuff. Just funny. Yeah, funny ass. Sh- if you go on there now, let's see if I can pull it up. Yeah. But if you go read on there some, now, stuff. it's like uh, so like when the league shut down. Um, did he keep going? That would be funny as fuck. It would. Yeah, <laughs> but like he ended it perfectly. It was like a, um. Ah, shit, you got to just see it. But, like, when the the league ended and then he put, like, Toby Maguire or something, they've added some stuff to it now. But, like, That'd be funny. this is what it, when it ended. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, leaving. And that was, that was, that was the it. last of it. Yeah, that was it. I mean, that was the end of his freaking brain. Well, that's funny. But yeah, but like he did shit like that throughout the whole season, and like we went viral so many times. He went viral so many times mm-hmm. with so much different stuff, just from just being himself and stuff. So like it was really cool. That was a, that was a cool side of like professional sports to see because like yeah. it's not all freaking professional and stuff like that. Like yeah. we're out there, we're playing a game, like we're having fun. Yeah. You know, you're like grown men having. And it's fun an emotional ass game, so that that is kind of a more fun perspective than the NFL of all professional political correctness type shit trying to kind of hide the emotion basically Mm -hmm. from the game because yeah you're fucking hyped up out there you're literally smashing into each other full sprint yeah exactly. time after time after time after time again like you're probably going to be in a different headspace exactly (laughs) and and it's just like the the side that i mean you can vouch for this like football and the brotherhood and stuff mm-hmm. like that that's the shit that matters and that's the cool shit you know that's the stuff that fans don't see you know people just watching the sport you don't know how those guys interact on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. you don't know how much time they spend together how mm-hmm. much what they sacrifice to get to that point you yeah. know especially you professional see. exactly like even in high school yeah it's definitely a thing but i would imagine it's even multiplied in college and then even multiplied in, in any professional league yeah like these are some these are gr- like grown-ass men um taking time away from their families to go play a game you know like especially that, the xfl that, yeah exactly because you're not all those guys obviously probably want to be in the nfl mm-hmm. and it's like a lot of them maybe they feel like their last chance or they're so close and they know they like they're sacrificing what probably a regular career, a normal nine to five, or like you're saying, leaving your family, going across the country, you moving to Seattle, mm-hmm. all that shit. I mean, I was, I was thankful because I mean, um, I'm only twenty. I was only mm-hmm. twenty three when I went in, so like I didn't really have anything to lose. But like you got people that are, I mean, my QB BJ Daniels, he was thirty years old, thirty one years old. I mean, he didn't have, like, a family and kids. I mean, he's got family, but he didn't have, like, kids and mm-hmm. stuff. But, um, Evan Rodriguez, he was a tight end on my team. He had he had two kids, a wife, you know, and um, he brought them with, you know. He, he moved them across the country all the way from New Jersey all the way to, uh. to Seattle to play a game, you know, just to put that in perspective, you know, how much it means to us and how much it means to – it's like uh, – guys like me trying to chase their dream try to go get things you know it's it's still relevant to them as 30 years 30 years old yeah so um i don't know it's just something to put in perspective when you think about football players and stuff yeah. just it's not always just kind of x's and o's you know like easy life you know you sacrifice a lot for everything mm-hmm. and you really saw it you know with the xfl yeah i, I feel like anything you do this football is physical. Obviously, everyone knows that. If you haven't played it, you don't know how much. But even guys who are healthy aren't healthy. Like, you're beating the shit out of your body. If you're playing, that doesn't mean you're not hurting. But you're literally sacrificing, obviously, time, everything in that. that everything that comes with that. But you're sacrificing your health. And, again, it has, you have to be in this mental state especially at that level where you're competing in a professional league, like you have to go hard every fucking play. Yeah. So, you're fighting for a job. Exactly. Like, and I think anything, anything in life doesn't have to just be football. Like that's that difficult. If you're doing it in a group, like that group of people is probably going to get really close. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah, man. And, yeah, like I said, you're fighting for a job. You're fighting every snap, you know. You're fighting for way more than, um, you know, when you're in college and stuff. You're you're just going to school. Mm. But, like, you're fighting for your family. Your family's on your back. You know, you got that la- name on your back. That's what everybody you're fighting for. And that's what's kind of – that's what your story is, you know. You carry that with your name. And, uh, and yeah, every snap is, is a battle. And um, – it's something that you got to kind of think about when you're, when you're playing professional, because, um, everything's changing. You're a grown man. You're playing with a grown man. You know, people, this is their job and they don't want you to take this away from them, you know? And every time they mess up, it looks bad on them. Mm. And that, that jeopardizes everything their name is on, you know? So yeah, it's just like kind of, you put it in perspective like that and you see like how deep it really is. And you see, like, how much these guys are fighting and how much, you know, it means to them and how much they kind of put into this game. And uh, we're trying to make livings out of it. And um, we're trying to change our lives and ultimately get to that goal of playing in the NFL, you know, making millions of Mm -hmm. dollars and living the good life, you know, Mm -hmm. and playing playing the sport you grew up um, playing and doing it for a living and making money doing it, you know. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.